In this lesson, we're going to take a look at getting started with creating dynamic templates. In order to create a template that applies on multiple posts or categories, you need to use dynamic elements, global blocks, and display conditions. This will enable you to work more naturally with the builder by creating pages and templates at the same time. Every page can be a template as well based on the blocks and conditions you have on that page. We're treating all assets in Brizzy Cloud, things like blog posts, custom posts, categories, pages, and so on, as regular pages. In other words, if you want to edit a blog category or a blog post, you just go and edit it with Brizzy in the same way you goes with any asset. When you want to create a template, you just add the dynamic elements in a block, set the block as global, and use the display conditions to put it across your other categories or posts or where you need it. So now we've learned the definition of this, let's take a practical approach actually setting this up for ourselves. So to start off with, I've gone ahead and created a standard normal blog post in Brizzy Cloud. As you can see, we've got an image, we've got some text, and all of this is fully editable. However, if we scroll to the top, in this gray area, I want to make this dynamic. I want to use various different parts, things like the title and so on, and then I want to make this global and apply it across all of my blog posts. So first of all, let's go ahead and insert the dynamic data that we want to use in this templatable section. First element we want to bring in is the title for our blog post. Now Brizzy Cloud makes this really easy. All we need to do is open up the elements panel, and because we're inside the blog post, you can see the first item we have is title. We can simply drag that into our header area, and you can see that now inserts the blog post title for this specific post. But the beauty of this particular element when we set this up as a global header is that it will replace that title with whatever post is open. So not specific to this particular post, if we open up a different post, the title will change dynamically. Now that we've inserted our heading, we can go ahead, style this, do whatever we want with it. So let's select it. We'll open up the typography settings. We'll set this to be heading one because it's the title of our particular post. We can make any adjustments if we want to, to color, spacing, those kinds of things. We'll leave that as it is for now. We'll adjust the alignment to make this in the center, and there we go. There's the first part of what's going to be our dynamic header. So next on the agenda, I want to insert the excerpt in our header to make sure we can grab people's attention. To do that, all we're going to do is go back to the elements panel on the left-hand side. This time, we're going to choose the text element, place that underneath our title, and this time, we're going to choose the typography option. We'll select that, and you can see we have the dynamic data symbol. This allows us to select various different pieces of dynamic data from our post and so on. Let's select that. You can see inside there, we've got things like custom text, post title, excerpt, and so on. Lots of different options. For this example, we're simply going to choose the excerpt. You can see that now pulls the excerpt information. Now you can ignore any HTML tags inside here. They will be rendered when you actually output this. You won't see them on the front end of your website. So now we can go ahead and change any of the typography, any of the alignment, those kinds of things. So for this example, let's set this to be a subtitle. We're going to set this to be aligned to the center, and we are pretty much good to go. So the final piece of the puzzle is to change this pale gray background and use the featured image behind that to give it a bit of visual impact. To do that, let's go over to the section options in the top right hand corner. And the first thing we're going to do is set the background image. To do that, we're simply going to open background up. Again, you can see we've got the dynamic icon. We'll choose that from there. We'll set this to be original. And we can also set any kind of parallax effect if we want to, or we can switch this off completely. Let's leave it set to animated for this example. If you want to apply filters, change it to black and white, those kinds of things, you can do that under the filter section. We'd also come into the overlay, and inside here we can set a custom overlay. For this example, let's just set this to be a dark color, almost black. We'll adjust the opacity on there to about 65%. So once we've done that, we've basically set up everything. Now obviously you can't see any image inside here at the moment, but this gray area will be replaced by the image that's been set up for the featured image for any of the posts you use. Obviously, we're going to need to quickly change the typography settings. Let's just change all this to be white, just so it stands off the background a little better, and it'll work so much nicer. Let's go ahead and take a look at this now. Let's just click Update to make sure that we commit those changes, and let's preview our design. So now you can see our header section has the featured image inside there, our title, and our excerpt. If we scroll up and down, you can see we've got that parallax effect. So that's the first part of this all done. We've created the header section. Next thing we need to do is save this as a global element so we can use this and then set up the conditions to apply it to all of our blog posts in the future. 
Okay, so to make this header section global, all we need to do is come over to the header options in the top right hand corner one more time and choose the very first option. Inside there, we can simply make this global. Once we check it, that now makes that header section global. And we see if we take a look at the section menu again, you can see we've got the little blue circle in the top corner denoting the fact that this is a global section. So now that we've made this header section global, the next thing we need to do is set the conditions for where it's going to be used. Let's open up the options again for the section, choose the very first icon one more time, and now you'll see we've got display conditions. Let's choose the option. And inside there, this now shows us any or all of the display conditions for where this global section is going to be used. Currently, you can see this is set to include the blog section and only the specific post. However, we can expand this and say we want to apply this to all of our posts. If we wanted to add additional conditions, we can simply click add new to condition. We can choose to include or exclude, and then we can go ahead and set any of those pages, sections, all those kinds of things up inside here to exclude those from our designs. For this example though, let's just delete that for now and stick with the displaying this on all blog posts. We'll hit save, and that's the condition then applied to our global header section. So we can close this dialog box down, update our design, and we've now set up a global header with dynamic information. So finally, let's just test this all out. Let's go ahead and add a new blog post in. So come to the top right hand corner, open our blog section, and inside our all posts, we're gonna to click to add a new post. We'll give this a title, we'll add a featured image, we'll insert an excerpt, and we'll choose a category. For this example, we'll just set it to be a blog. We can hit save changes, and now we can go ahead and edit this post in the same way we normally would. Let's click on edit, and you can see now this opens up the page and includes our header section for both our title, our featured image, and our excerpt. So now we can go ahead and just add in whatever we want. So let's just go ahead and just add in our own section. We'll add an image at the top. We'll choose to upload an image. And finally, we go ahead and we'll just add some content underneath. We'll also go ahead and adjust the actual width of this. We'll set this to be 80% width, just for a pretty cool look. Okay, so we'll just click on Save Draft, and we'll go ahead and publish our post. And then we'll go ahead and preview. As you can see, there's our post title, there's our excerpt, there's our featured image and our parallax effect, and there's all of our content, all dynamically generated from our new blog post.